Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good everything. How are you all doing? Yes, we're back into that space, the World Cafe Live Show. How has it been with you? Good with me, I must say. You know, I mean, it's been amazing where I am. It's been raining. You know, I mean, practically for almost a week now, it's been raining and the weather was pretty good where I am. Yes, I'm excited today. Yes, I know you're seeing it on my screen already. The legend of Nikola Tesla It's like, do we want to talk about Tesla today? Yes, we're, we're going to be talking about Tesla today. And before I bring my guest on, he is this amazing personality i've been doing a lot of reading of late about tesla his life and everything and i came upon i mean this individual his name is mark jeffrey safer when he comes on he will do uh, i mean talk about himself uh, and all of that but he is a Nikola Tesla expert, and I read one of his recent work about Nikola Tesla, and I was blown away. As in a few, uh, I mean, uh, pages I read, and I'm still reading that book. You know, I, I got to him and I said, "Please, would you love to come on my show and talk about Mr. Tesla, his legend, his legacy, and all of that?" And he was like, "Why not? If not?" And I'm super excited. Enough of my talk, and I'm going to bring him on now, where he. Now, there he is. Hello, Mark. Hello, Amanakri. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And you? Great. Doing great. I mean, I'm super excited. You know, I was telling my wife about Nikola Tesla, and uh, I told her I, I came in contact with this Nikola Tesla expert, and she was like, okay, tell me, what is it? As I reached him to come on the show, and he accepted. She was like, really? I said, yes. And she was like, good for you. And here we are today. I am super excited. So how's the weather where you are now? How's the weather? Well, yesterday was the perfect day. It was a perfect spring day. Today, a little bit cloudy, but um, All right. you know, we're headed into spring and then in the summer, my favorite time of the year. Yeah. Yeah, favorite for all of us. Where I am, it's been raining anyway. Here in Nigeria, it's been raining. And, uh, well, we can't complain. We, we, we need the rain. Yes, we need the rain. You know, before I brought you on, before we go into talking about who Max Safer is and we, we get into the days, you were telling me something about a Nigerian that, I mean, you've been in contact with for a while, but you lost touch. So her name, you said, is Abimbola. Yes, Abimbola Agutsatan. Uh, oh. I'm, I'm in Rhode Island and my wife worked at the University of Rhode Island and she was a graduate student there for many oh, years gosh. and we were good mm -hmm. friends. Beautiful. Uh, amazing. Amazing. So who is Mark Safer? Let us get to meet Mark Safer. Who is he? I'm a strange guy, I have to admit. <laughs> I taught uh, parapsychology, ESP, for many years. Right. And uh, because of my interest in parapsychology, I got friends with a guy who was involved with UFOs. And mm. because of that, believe it or not, this we're going all the way back to the 1970s, over 40 years you ago. You don't say. Te Tesla's name had totally disappeared from the history books. He was gone. But he was mm. kept alive in the UFO realm. And so right. I got a biography of his uh, from a UFO organization. And uh, Howard had given me some other information about, about it. Howard was teaching a course on UFOs. And he mm -hmm. also had a, a, a magazine called Ancient Astronauts. Mm -hmm. So I wrote my first article on Tesla in 1976. It was called Nikola Tesla, The Man Who Fell to Earth. Mm. And there was this mythology that he was born on another planet. He'd come to the, this world to give us a hydroelectric power system, remote control, mm -hmm. wireless communication, mm -hmm. uh, uh, fluorescent and neon lights, uh, the induction motor, and that he was a Martian. And this became eventually a movie starring David Bowie. And David mm. Bowie plays an extraterrestrial. But it's secretly about Tesla. So in 1976, very few people knew it was about Tesla. But oh. in the years, the early 2000s, there was the movie The Prestige, where David Bowie again played Tesla. And that was mm. the reason he was, he, you know, he was chosen, because 40 years earlier, 35 years earlier, he had played a Martian who, who actually was based on Tesla's life. So... Mm. It was due to my interest in ESP uh, that I got interested in, in Tesla. And once I found out that his patents were real, I said, wow, you know, 
you know, you got telepathy, psychokinesis, out of body experiences, psychic mm -hmm. metal bending, all these uh, ghosts, life yeah. after death. That that's all hard to prove. But Tesla had real patents, so this was solid stuff. So so that's why I really got into it. And that that created my first book, Wizard: The Life and Times yeah. of Nikola Tesla. Yeah. And in it, what I did was I have a thousand end notes because there was a lot of mm. prejudice against him. And mm. I wanted to say, take read all the research and you'll see he really is the inventor of the hydroelectric power system, the induction yeah. motor, remote control, robotics, cell phone technology. And so yeah. that's really how I got started. And that's really uh, a little bit about myself. Beautiful. I, I, I mean, I, I will describe what you have said now, like you were chosen for this, more or less like, picked out to talk about this man, Nikola Tesla. You know, a lot of us don't know so much about him. You know, when I mentioned Tesla to my wife, she's, what came to her mind was Elon Musk. I said, no, it's, it's not Elon. There's somebody called Nikola Tesla, right. you know. <laughs> and I had to like give her one or two information about it. Ah, really? I said, yes. So for me as a reader and I love researching and all that. I came upon Nikola Tesla way back, I think in my secondary school days or so. And I read about him. Honestly, reading about him made it look like he was not human. You know, he, 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 he I mean, the way he, his thought pattern and everything. But over the years, and I've stumbled upon the current war between Tesla and uh, is in George Westenhouse now, I think so. You know, and that brought aroused my interest again. And in course of, I came upon you, who had really done serious work on him. And I was like, no, somehow I need to share more about this individual called Nikola Tesla on my show. And I'm glad, like I said earlier, you took, you accepted to do this. Now, when I was reading your book, the the, the beginning part, talking about his origin, Tesla. I mean, now, you know from the Romania, Croatia aspect and all that. Can, can, you, can you say one or two things about that? Because when I saw that, it was quite ancient for me. And I was like, this guy is actually real. Yeah, Tesla was born in 1856. This was the same year that Sigmund Freud was born. And he mm. was born in Croatia in, in a town called Smiljan. So if you've been to Rome... It's only 150 miles across the Adriatic Sea as the crow mm -hmm. flies, but yeah. it's 100 or 200 or 300 years more primitive. Uh, it's, a, it's a very backward area. Uh, when I was there in 1986, uh, there were ox carts uh, in, instead of cars, you know. Mm. It's really in the middle of nowhere. So he grew up in the middle of nowhere, but he was highly intelligent. His father was a, a, a Serbian Orthodox priest. These priests, uh, you know, they believe in Jesus Christ, but they can get married. So that's the difference between the Catholic priest and the and the Orthodox priest. Yeah. So he was married, and he was he had uh, five children, and uh, Tesla was the, the fourth child. It was an older brother, Donne, and, and both Donne and Tesla had uh, great powers of eidetic imagery. They could yeah. envision things in their mind. And eventually, Tesla would come to design uh, uh, inventions in his mind and run them in his mind and then see what's wrong with them and then eventually actually physically build them. And he, so that was you know, one of his abilities. He also had the ability, it's called traveling clairvoyance. He could travel to other places in his mind. And mm -hmm. so he had all this mystical background. Uh, but he eventually went to Graz University in Austria which was like in America, like MIT. I mean, it's very highly technical school. And then he yeah. went to the University of Prague in Czechoslovakia. And uh, he was an advanced mathematics uh, student. So, you know, you're asking, you know, what did he, was there some mystical side to him? And I think there was a mystical side. And that was okay. in, the, in the 1870s and the early 1880s, you have to understand, you know, electricity was just coming in. Edi Tom Edison had built the light bulb. But mm -hmm. electricity by its nature is alternating. It's an AC current. Now, what mm -hmm. alternating current means is that it changes its direction of flow at thousands of miles a second. So if you have a wire, yeah. the electricity is going back and forth and back and forth. But yeah. how do you make a motor run in one direction? Think mm -hmm. about, suppose it was a water wheel 
and a river. Suppose the river was flowing downstream, then upstream, then downstream, then upstream at thousands of times a second. How could you make the water wheel go in one direction? So what they did was they eliminated the upflow and they only mm -hmm. had the downflow. That's what direct current is, but it was highly inefficient. So when Edison was building his Edison light bulbs, you could only send electricity about one mile and then only for lighting homes. You couldn't run your refrigerator, your toaster, your factory. So if you could only, uh, I don't know Nigeria well enough, but I'm sure mm. there's, there's hundreds of villages all throughout Nigeria. So yeah. you would have to have at every single village a, a, a power plant and it would be run by coal or mm. if, unless it was next to an, a river. So all yeah. the factories where I am, I'm in near New York and Boston, that all the major factories in the 1800s were along a river because you had to be so close to the power source. Yeah. So, when, so when Tesla came in, 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 in where I live in the New York, Boston area, there were 3,000 coal operated power plants, you know, lighting up all these hamlets. We have all this pollution, all this coal pollution operated all pollution going into the. So, what Tesla figured out was how to do away with the commutator. In other words, how to do away with the mechanism that only made electricity go in one direction. And what he did was it took him five years of daily concentration. He came mm -hmm. up with two uh, circuits out of phase with each other. And when you time the two circuits, he created something called the rotating magnetic field. And that mm -hmm. was so he could make a motor work. So once you remove the commutator, the difference between Edison's system and Tesla's system, with Edison's system, you could only send electricity one mile only for lighting homes. With Tesla's system, and, and you've got coal operated polluting. With Tesla's system, he's the inventor of the hydroelectric power system. Hydroelectrics mm -hmm. is clean energy. It's running on a waterfall, so there's no air pollution. And from one falls, Niagara Falls in New York, you could mm -hmm. run factories and power homes to run refrigerators, vacuum cleaners, toasters, et cetera, lighting in Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, uh, New, New Haven, Providence, the entire Northeast, thousands and thousands, millions of homes run yeah. from one clean operated energy system. So for me, uh, it's utopian dream. It is the perfect situation because you're not sapping the, the world of oil or coal. It's running on a waterfall, it's renewable, and it's clean. You're not, you're not polluting the earth. So in that way, I think had he not come at that time, we would be in, in terrible straits. So he, he came in a mystical way at this perfect time and did away with all that, that coal-operated local power plants and changed the world. So the current mm -hmm. war that you were talking about, Westinghouse backed Tesla. So it yeah. was Westinghouse and Tesla against Tom Edison. Not Tom Edison, yeah. So if Tom Edison had won the, the, the war of the currents, all the factories would have had to move to Niagara Falls. He couldn't have even lit Buffalo, which was 22 miles away. So thank mm. heavens that Tesla and Westinghouse won the war of the currents. Yeah. Now, now you know, when, when you made mention of his childhood, the heretic uh, imagery and his brother, Dane, I read about that, you know, the beginning part of the book. Uh, what caught my attention was he was fascinated by animals, nature, and somehow he related so well that growing up into the full-fledged Tesla, he was always going back to those moments and taking those images he saw in creating uh, the future. C can, you, can you throw more light on that? Yeah, he had a cat. The cat's name was Macaque. And it was uh, in the winter. It was a lot of static electricity. So he's petting the cat and these sparks are flying off the cat and his mother's afraid that, that the house will burn down. <laughs> and he's in his 80s, reflecting back on his childhood. And he said, I still don't really understand what electricity is. Here's the greatest electrical inventor of, of the modern times, still not really knowing what electricity is. Our whole body runs on electricity. Um, we get electricity, you know, life comes from the sun. But what he's talking about is that there's some mystical side to our existence. And as much as we know about it, how can we really understand the secret of life, which is electrical in nature? I think that's that's you know linked to to his early uh, childhood of just petting this cat and seeing the sparks fly off the cat. Yeah. So 
Now, I, I was I, I came upon this documentary, I think uh, Telefonke or so, that's the name, that had to do with, I think, the Second World War, the Germans sending and all of that, and Tesla's name came into the mix. I, I wanted to say something about that because it's like his thoughts drove those processes. Yeah, well, he lived a long, long life, born in 1856, he lives through World War One, which is around 1915 to 1917. He also lives all through the beginning of World War Two, and he was always trying to figure out a way to end all wars. In the 1890s, during the Spanish-American War in 1898, he invented the remote-controlled robotic boat. I think he should have gotten a Nobel Prize for this invention. It's just an incredible invention. What he had was it's a boat that operated remote control. You, 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 you know, you have these toys, the cars that run on remote control. But he had two aerials on the boat. The reason that he had the two aerials, he was using two different frequencies because mm -hmm. if the, the combination of those two frequencies would be selective tuning. The problem was if you use a torpedo and you're on a boat and you send a torpedo out, the bad guys could take your torpedo, make it turn around and go back if they could catch that frequency. So how do you get a very top secret frequency? He came up with the concept of multiplying frequencies. That is the basis of cell phone technology. Every single person on this planet, and there were 8 billion people, can each have their own cell phone. Tesla is the guy who figured that out, how to do that. And it's all in 1898 with those two aerials where he's using a combination of two frequencies. Marconi at the time could only send Morse code and, and, and only dots and dashes and only knew one frequency. Tesla was working with literally hundreds of thousands of different frequencies and, and was trying to tell JP Morgan in 1901 that I can mm -hmm. create a, 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 you know, an unlimited number of wireless channels. So you have the inventor of cell phone technology in that one invention, but it's also a robotics. Tesla, in 1898, he says, I have created a new species on the planet, not made out of flesh and bones, but out of wires and steel. And, and it's this boat. Um, so he's already created artificial intelligence. And the way that he steered the boat was with an mm. on off system. You know, you have a rudder. So when the, when, the, when the electricity was on, the rudder went in one direction. And when the electricity was off, a spring would take the rudder in, uh, the, rudder in the other direction. So he used an on-off system, which is a binary code, to direct this boat. That is the, the basis of all, every single computer chip listens to uh, ones and zeros, yes and no, on and off. So you have in this one invention, uh, like the remote control, uh, the TV remote, the garage door opener, uh, the uh, drone warfare, artificial intelligence, robotics, yeah. cell phone technology. I lost you there the for a bit. Oh, the network. <laughs> We're having a, I mean, such a wonderful conversation. Guys, you can hear firsthand. I can see you. Hello, Mark. Yes. Sorry, I lost you there for a bit. <laughs> sorry, sorry. The That's network okay. from my team. All right. So you were explaining the the robotics. Sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll just sum up a little bit about it. This yes. is 1898 at Madison Square Garden. He's got these two aerials, which creates the basis of tech, uh, cell phone technology, radio, encryption, uh, and all of that. He has. He says that I have created a new species on the planet, not mm -hmm. made out of flesh and bones, but out of wires and steel. So he's got the, this idea of the race of robots, artificial, artificial intelligence. I don't know when we, we lost contact, but the way he steered the boat <clears throat> was with an on-off system. 
if the electricity was on, the boat, the, the, the rudder went in one direction. If the electricity was off, a spring would bring it into the other direction. So he's just got two components to steer a boat. That is the basis of our cell phone technology. Um, we have um, every computer chip mm. uh, listens to only ones and zeros. The electricity is on or off. So he has the basis of computer technology, artificial intelligence, remote control, drone warfare, cell phone technology, all in this one invention. And in the 1890s, that's the brilliance of this incredible guy. That, that, that's like he was living way beyond his time. So to, I mean, if one can say that way beyond his time, even into this present uh, dispensation that we are in. Now, I, I read something about his notes being confiscated at the time by the CIA or so, as in most of his original works. Why would they do that from, from, from where you stand? Why? Well, he died in World War II. And when we made the television show, The Tesla Files, it went out to uh, 40 different countries. And in making the television show, I did a lot of research on the CIA, the FBI. And in those days, there's something called the Office of Alien Property. The reason that they had that office was America was at war with Germany and Japan. And there was a fear that anybody linked to, to a, those two foreign countries would be potential enemies. So the Office of Alien Property would confiscate any, any property owned by a foreign government or foreign land. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tesla's um, nephew was the ambassador to Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia was a communist country. Joseph Stalin, you know, in Russia was a communist country. So theoretically, when Tesla died, all of his papers, his secret papers, his particle being... Hello, Mark. Yes. I'm losing you. The network is somewhat. Uh... Can you hear me? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry today, the network that we're going to go through. So I lost you where you were giving the explanation to the Tesla files. Yeah, so his, his, his uh, nephew was the ambassador from Yugoslavia, which was a communist country. Uh, even though Joseph Stalin, you know, was part of the Allies during World War II, you know, yeah. with, uh, England, France, Soviet Union, and America were all together against the Nazi Germans. But it was still, you know, Stalin was a bad guy and we were stuck with, the, you know, this horrible communist uh, regime. So yeah. the, the fear was that after Tesla died, if his papers went to uh, uh, Yugoslavia, Tito was the uh, head of Yugoslavia at the time, his, mm -hmm. and Tesla's nephew was the ambassador of Yugoslavia, then the Soviet Union would have access to all of Tesla's top secret papers. So they kept the papers for 10 years. And then in the early 1950s, most of, the, if not all of the papers, were transferred to a museum in, uh, in Belgrade, Yugoslavia, uh, which is now Serbia. Uh, yeah. and so that was the main reason. They didn't, it was during the war. They didn't want potential enemies to get a hold of his papers. He had what was known as a particle beam weapon or a death ray. Mm. And, and he wanted to sell the death ray to the uh, British government. And what I discovered in, in, uh, in Wizard at War was that Tesla was negotiating with General Andrew McNaughton, who was the head of secret weapons development for the British government. He was working with Winston Churchill. And McNaughton was third in line to head allied forces. It was Eisenhower, Mountbatten, and then there was this guy, McNaughton. That's who Tesla was negotiating with. Tesla was negotiating with the very peak of power. And we also discovered a letter from Franklin Roosevelt wanting to meet with Tesla. And the reason was 
this particle beam weapon, the death ray, might have been the only way to protect us against the atom bomb. You know, whoever got the atom bomb would win World War II. And the Germans had Heisenberg, who was a Nobel Prize winner. And uh, the Americans uh, and the British, they had Niels Bohr and Oppenheimer. Uh, these were brilliant scientists. And there was a race. Whoever gets the bomb first wins the war. So if the Germans were to get the bomb, they would have to deliver it probably by plane or by a V-2 rocket. You might need a laser-like beam, a death ray, to knock that thing out of the sky. That's why Tesla's work was so important at that time. Uh, that was what was uh, going on. The f literally, the fate of the entire world uh, was at play there. So now, now, why why did he not? Why didn't? I mean, I don't know how to frame this question. Brilliant as he was, I don't think he won a Nobel Prize for anything. Yeah, he never got the Nobel Prize. In 1915, it was announced that he and Edison were to share the Nobel Prize in the New York Times front page above mm -hmm. the fold. And uh, they never got it. And the New York Times never apologized for this huge mistake. However, in the 1930s, the fellow who nominated Albert Einstein for a Nobel Prize nominated Tesla for a Nobel Prize. So he has been nominated for a Nobel Prize, but he didn't okay. get one. I think he deserved about four or five Nobel Prizes, literally. Uh, uh, just in that one invention of the, of the remote control robotic boat. Mm, amazing. Now, where, what, what do we do with his memory? What, what do we do with his, uh, what I say, his legacy? Because somehow a lot of people, a good number of us, don't know about Nikola Tesla. I think what's important is to, uh, well, you know, I think you should get my book. But I think the more we learn about Tesla, he, he constantly, you know, raises the bar for you. Um, mm -hmm. I've been studying his life since the 1970s, and I'm still learning things about Tesla. For instance, at the end of, at the end of uh, Tesla Wizard at War, I get into his theories on gravity. Now, I, didn't, I never totally understood gravity. You're, what's so amazing uh, is that you are in Nigeria. I'm mm -hmm. in near New York. I'm in Rhode Island. And mm -hmm. here we are talking to each other live on camera. Tesla yes. is telling J.P. Morgan in 1901, I want to unify the whole world so that someone in Australia or someone in China will be talking to you as if you're across the room, which is exactly what we are, we are living his dream. So in terms of gravity, you know, I, I'm like, I think of myself, we're on the top of the planet and, and Australia's mm -hmm. on the bottom of the planet. How come they don't fall off the earth? You know, mm -hmm. gravity somehow keeps everybody onto the planet and the planet is, you know, rotating at a thousand miles an hour. <clears throat> so I, I never totally understood what gravity was, but Tesla was saying what gravity was, was that all energy, all matter is absorbing energy all of the time. So mm -hmm. this pen is absorbing matter. This phone is absorbing matter. This book is absorbing matter. The earth is absorbing a tremendous amount of, of ether, or, or, which becomes matter. Ether all of the time. So everything is absorbing ether. So the reason that we fall back to the earth, according to this theory, is not that we're attracted to the earth, but that we're in the way of this influx of this tremendous in, uh, input of energy. So it's a very different way of looking at uh, what yeah. gravity is. And, yeah. and I think it makes a lot of sense to me. So we're like, you know, we're constantly absorbing energy all of the time. Mm. Now, now, Einstein spent 40 years, the last 40 years of his life, trying to combine gravity with electromagnetism. This would be called grand unification, mm -hmm. and he never achieved that. <clears throat> if all of matter is absorbing energy all the time, what is it doing with that energy? It, it, it has to get rid of it, otherwise it would, it would explode. So it's absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. So it's transforming that energy into electromagnetic energy. That would be grand unification. That would be combining gravity with electromagnetism and it'd be solving Einstein's dream of grand unification. So that's at the end of this book. And it all comes out of studying Tesla's dynamic theory of gravity. So what I'm trying to say is, here it is for me 40 years later, I'm still learning a lot about the world because of Tesla's incredible genius trying to figure out you know, uh, what his, all of his ideas were. 
Amazing. I think you were born to do this, in my opinion, as in to, to more or less like open up those portals, you know, for, for us to like begin to think and, you know, begin to, re would I say receive those, would I say intelligence to make more changes within our society and our world. Now, from where you stand and what you've been doing so far, has it been moving this, uh, would I say, cause forward, you know, in getting people to understand this mind better? Well, uh, I've been, his story is so fascinating. And, and the thing for me about Tesla is he constantly gets more interesting as you, as you go through his whole life. So I've written a screenplay with my, my writing partner, Tim Eaton, and we recently have uh, been negotiating with Show Dog Entertainment, which is a, a film yeah. company. Uh, and we're, we're working on a film on his life. I okay. think that he inspires people. And I mm -hmm. think that, and, and the thing about him too is, you know, the word genius is overused. You know, this guy's a genius, that guy's a genius. Tesla really was a genius. <laughs> you know, another invention of his was called the Osprey helicopter airplane. He called it the flivver plane. He mm -hmm. said the plane would take off like a, a, a helicopter and then you'd rotate the, the propeller into the airplane position. So you could land any place. You could land, uh, he had, he called it a flivver plane, be the size of a, of a car. If we mm -hmm. all had these cars. So you could travel wherever you wanted and land in your backyard. You wouldn't need a huge ramp, uh, you know, like a runway that, that the yeah. airplane had. And that became this $70 million plane that the, that the, the, the U.S. military has called the Osprey. And he mm -hmm. has a patent uh, in the 1920s on this. What I think you asked about his papers, they hid a lot of his stuff. They hid a lot of what he did. And yeah. when you look at the history of the Osprey helicopter airplane, you won't see Tesla's name. And the only reason that I'm able to say this is because he had a patent on it. I'm able to prove that he really is the inventor of the Osprey helicopter airplane. But had he not had the patent, if he simply had drawings about it, we would never know about it. Um, so there's all these secrets about him, which which are there. But I but I think that what I wanted to say is he's a positive guy. He's a guy yeah, that needs to grow throughout his whole life. And yeah. based upon you know talking with you, you have this open mind. You know this this interest in the world and how to make the world a better place. That's yeah. why I mentioned the hydroelectric power system. It's the Beautiful. perfect system. It's the solution to our power needs. Yeah. Let's not pollute the earth. Uh, let, let's have energy and mm -hmm. have it be renewable, and that's that's mm -hmm. what he achieved. You know, if we look if we look at Japan, Japan had that horrible nuclear power disaster yeah. um, because they put the nuclear power plant on the coast. They're on a volcano. They could use geothermal energy, which Tesla talked about, because all a nuclear power plant does is boil water. That's all a nuclear power plant does. It boils water to create steam. So can't we create steam in a better way than a nuclear power? Because with mm. nuclear power, you've got, what do you do with the, uh, with, the, with, the wa with the waste? There's no place to put the waste. And yeah. you have the danger of, they've lost hundreds of acres, thousands of acres because of that horrible thing. So Tesla, to me, uh, stands for um, the utopian dream of how humans can evolve to the next stage. How can we live in this world with, with our animals and without polluting the earth. And he mm. sets the, the example of how to achieve that. And he mentioned, you know, many sources. Uh, geothermal was one, the tides, wind, solar. He talked about all of that at the turn of the century, you know, 100 years ago. Beautiful. I, I, I pray that our, the, 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 the film, uh, filmmakers would buy your idea and let's, let's see more of uh, Nicola, as in hear about him and get into that element, because you know, reading about him, I came to realize that he was not uh, he was not a shy a shy lock. He was not after making profit. Rather, he made his inventions, his discovery, and all of that so public, so reachable that it's like we're here to help one another. I'm here to like be part of positive change in the world that's what even when i watch the movie uh the current war and all of that and come to read that he died like a peasant i mean what 
tell t t tell my audience about his death, the way he died. Yeah, well, there's different ways to look at it because what I discovered, particularly in in the new book, Wizard at War, is that Tesla was literally negotiating with General McNaughton, who I mentioned, who was working with Winston Churchill, with yeah. Franklin Roosevelt's people. So he really was a living, uh, he even into his 80s. So you have this this mythology of him just being this old man, you know, uh, dying in obscurity, feeding the pigeons in, mm -hmm. in New York City. But in fact, he was right in the middle of the game, trying to save the world, trying to beat uh, Adolf Hitler and the Nazis, literally up until the day he died. Um, I interviewed Ralph Bergstresser, who was in military intelligence in the 1940s, who was probably the last person to see Tesla alive. And what, what Bergstresser was telling me was that Tesla was giving Bergstresser all of the secrets to the, to the death ray so that America would be protected. So, yes, he, was, he didn't have much money at the end of his life, but, he, but he, it was, what was much more important to him was saving the planet, beating the Nazis, um, negotiating with, with the higher ups, uh, you know, in, in Great Britain and the United States. Yeah. And, you know, he also, he saw himself, he said, I'm, I'm a farmer. I plant seeds and let other people, you know, grow the crops. So a lot of his ideas are seeds uh, to, oh. to help other people. And then I told you, you know, the whole thing about gravity and stuff, that was a seed for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that has grown into, I think, uh, a good explanation of trying to explain how to combine gravity with electromagnetism. Um, but he's just very inspiring. He's just an inspiring person, a positive yeah. person, and caring yeah. about the planet, caring about unifying the world. He, you and yeah. I together are right now are, are fulfilling his dream. He wanted yeah. all the continents to be able to communicate. Communicate with ease. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, how do you spend your time? You know, how do you spend on wine? I, I, let, let me ask some personal questions. Like, based on what you've been doing, how do you on wine, family life, and all of that? Well, uh, Lois and I have been together over fifty years. Um, we've uh, I'm very much in love, and uh, you know, we love to swim, um, and we love to <laughs> you know watch movies together. Yeah, uh, yeah. We have families that we care about. Um, I play bridge, you know, uh, uh, my, my partner from many, from high school, we played okay. recently. Um, but I've been working on this film project, uh, very much. I've also uh, written another book on ozone therapy. Tesla was yeah. a, a, um, sold ozone machines. Um, this horrible pandemic that, uh, destroyed the world for a while, put the world on hold. For a while, mm. ozone therapy kills viruses, and, and so this new book. Um, let me see if I can find it. I know Nigeria yeah. suffered greatly from yeah. from yeah. COVID. This yeah. book, you know, I'm trying to alert the world that there is a way to kill viruses, and the reason I learned about ozone therapy it's simply the inject injection of oxygen and uh, and uh, ozone into the bloodstream. Um, oh. I learned because Tesla had an ozone machine. He, he patented an ozone generator. So he understood that ozone, uh, when used correctly, uh, uh, will help, you know, in many, uh, cure many diseases. I'm sure there were ozone therapists in Nigeria. Um, oh. So that's uh, another thing that I'm doing. Uh, but right now, I'm really heavily uh, working on the screenplay, on the Tesla screenplay. I'm um, wow. really uh, very much involved in that. Um, and I've been doing podcasts. I, yeah. uh, this is, to me, this is great to be able to Thank talk you. to you. Uh, Thank you. Thank in you. Nigeria. Um, Thank you. It's, uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. And, uh, you know, look, we're you. friends. You know what I mean? It just, it, you, know what I, you know, we hit it off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, you know, like, like I said, when I reached out to you, I was like, mm, what's it going to be like? Mm, and when you responded, wow, it meant the whole world to me. And I couldn't hold it. I had to tell my wife about it. That I just, you know, I met this guy about Tesla, blah, 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 and all of that. It was <laughs> like, whoa, good for you. 
you know, and here we are talking about him. I am super excited. I mean, once again, I want to say a very big thank you. I, I know you're so busy and I want to wish you well on this project and let you know that I, for one, I'm looking forward to it, uh, as in to see it on that silver screen and to get to get to like hear more about this individual uh, called Nikola Tesla. I want to say a very big thank you. Guys, we've been discussing with Mr. Mark Jeffrey Safer. We've been talking about the legend of Nikola Tesla. You will agree with me. It has been an amazing 30 minutes plus discussing with him, hearing, I mean, this incredible, he's a genius. Let, let, let's, let's, let's give it to him. Mind that I've walked through the earth, bringing all about positivity and all of that. And his, his legend lives on, and we're still reaping from that beautiful mind. Before I, I let Mark go, Mark, tell us, tell us your, your utmost desire for what you are doing now, what you want to see, how you, how you want it to like revolutionize what we are seeing today in the world. Well, the one thing I would say, and this is Tesla in 1904. He said, I want to build my wireless system, which will convert the earth into a brain, as it were, which will feel in all its parts. Who thinks like that even now? But that's exactly what you and I are doing. You're in mm. Africa. I'm in North America. You know, we could add another guy in China and another guy in Europe. And the four mm. of us could be talking as four different people right now, unifying the whole world, living that dream. Mm. What I would like to see is exactly to the fulfillment of Tesla's dream. He called it harnessing uh, uh, mankind to the wheel work of nature. Mm. The hydroelectric power system runs on waterfalls. The water just keeps falling all the time. It's using Mother Nature's forces. Um, I would like to see, you know, people aware that that a, that a, a a cure for all illnesses really does exist. Yeah, and and it's by studying again Mother Nature. This came from Goethe's Goethe's uh, uh, findings, but. Uh, what has been discovered is that our own antibodies manufacture ozone uh, to mm. kill viruses. So mm. it's having an appreciation for nature, having a certain um, uh, respect for the intelligence of nature, um, and using that to not pollute the earth, using that to learn how to cure different diseases. I've always said uh, the cure for cancer, we sh we're fighting off cancer all the time. All we have to do is understand how how we do that and magnify that ability. The invention of the airplane. Man mm. would have never invented, or woman <laughs> would have never invented the airplane had it not yeah. been for birds. We study yeah. birds. So it, it's that concept. One of my heroes growing up as a kid was Jacques Cousteau. And what I loved about Jacques Cousteau was he would go under the water and use the highest technology to learn about fish and the coral reefs and all of that stuff. So that's that's what I hope is that we we respect nature. Um, I've always loved Africa, uh, mm. the whole idea of the, the saving all those animals. Um, mm. I felt that, you know, great kinship like Tesla, you know, okay. with with animals, with, with, uh, the lions and, and everything, you know, uh, the great apes, um, the, the birds. Uh, yeah. Here we have these beautiful hawks. I love the hawks. We have ospreys. Um, and pets, I, you know, I, I, we've all owned pets, you know, I have this secret, I have this theory about pets, you know, for instance, dogs, some dogs are just stupid dogs, others are secretly human, and uh, we all know what a secretly <laughs> human dog is, you know, uh, so yeah. having that respect, but I'm aware that even ants have intelligence, just yesterday, I was sitting out in the backyard, the ant was microscopic, but it was, a, I didn't kill it. I was, but I went like this, you know, pointing around and it's avoiding me. It's, it's aware. How can I mm -hmm. not get, get eaten by this giant thing? So mm -hmm. even ants have intelligence and it's having respect for all levels of nature um, yeah. and not polluting the earth. I think that, that's really what Tesla was trying to do. Renewable sources. Yeah. Um, and, you know, looking for, looking into how to make our grandchildren and great grandchildren live in a better place. That's really what it's about. Yeah.
Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you so much for this for this thought. I am super, super grateful. Guys, I mean, we can go on and on this course with Mark. There's this intelligence everywhere, you know, reaching out for us to like harness and make the world a better place. And that's the story. That's that's Mark's story, as in based on what Nikola Tesla has put forth out there. And so we're all looking forward to that screen. We are all going to be part of to celebrate, you know, the genius of Nikola Tesla. All right, guys, you know how we do it on the show. It's very difficult to say goodbye when we're having such an amazing, interesting Come back to bring in, I mean, wonderful guests and topics to talk about. And you know it, this is the space we come to lean on one another's, yes, experience to forge a positive path. And today we have the honor of having Mark Safer, you know, bringing in that positivity from the legend of. All right, Mark. Sorry, I'm That's back. Okay. Yes, I need to. We need to round up. Yeah, the network has been fluctuating. So, guys, like I said, you know how we do it on the show. We come into the space to lean on one another's experience to forge a positive path. And it's been an honor having Mark on the show today to add his positivity, you know, to this space. Well, I have to go now, but you know how I say it on this show: till we come your way again. Bye for now. Mark, what do you have to say? Thanks so much. It's great meeting you. I want to stay in touch. This was a fantastic experience for me. Thank you. Thank you.